All right, well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Elk Grove Church of Christ. We are so blessed that you found us. Happy, happy Easter. Today, we're gonna to be celebrating a risen Savior, and I just can't wait uh, to do that with you this morning. So thank you for joining us. If you are watching this right now, and you're like, man, I'd really wish I could uh, be in person with our, our church family, come come out to uh, Outdoor Church. We got chairs set up, you can come out, or you can sit in your car if you feel like sitting in chairs is, is not uh, where you're at right now. So you can just come out. Uh, we're all worshiping together at 11:30 behind our building if this is the way that you choose to worship with us thank you uh, we're just blessed that you're watching uh, that maybe god uses the lesson today to reach your heart and we just hope that you have a, an awesome worship with us this morning so let's be blessed and i can't wait uh, to see you guys again but also i can't wait to share in this moment of celebrating our risen savior with you today let's have a great worship everybody good morning everyone and happy easter I'm so happy that you have joined us as we celebrate the greatest event in the history of mankind, and that is the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And with that thought in mind, will you bow with me in prayer? Our Father in heaven, We are so thankful that you loved us so much that you sent your son to that cross to die for us, that he was laid in the tomb, and three days later he rose again and now sits at your right hand. And because of that, Father, we have hope. We have knowing that our faith is not worthless, knowing that we have our sins forgiven us, and that we now have hope that we too will be raised from the dead. And we ask that you will bless this gathering today as we celebrate that great event, and that is the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ from the dead. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. So everyone, I hope that uh, you have a great week and happy Easter. Bye-bye. Happy Easter. Today we are reading First Peter 23. Praise be to, God, to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. <laughs> Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord.
Good morning, church, and happy Easter. This is the time that we set aside every Sunday to remember Christ's sacrifice for us that led him to the cross on our behalf, and more importantly, his resurrection from the grave, which he did to conquer sin so that we can have abundant life with him eternally. At this time, we will partake of the bread, which represents his body, and the cup, which represents his blood shed for us. Would you bow with me? Dear God, we're so thankful for the love that you have for us. We're so thankful that while we are sinners, you sent your son Jesus to die for us and to be resurrected, God, to be with you again so that we can have eternal life with you. We're so thankful for all that you do for us and for the love that you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Have a great week. All right, well, good morning again, everybody. My name is Gavin Crutcher, and uh, we are going to be finishing our series, Beauty for Ashes, today. It's our Easter message uh, for this year, and today we're going to be talking about what does it mean when we encounter a risen Savior? What does it mean to our lives, when, and how does it change us? And, and if we really are true to ourselves, if we, if we believe we have encountered our risen Christ Jesus, it should change so much of us not just a little bit but everything not 50 percent or 60 percent 70 not even what i used to shoot for in school a nice solid 80 percent no it should change everything uh and it should be like the words of paul and in, in philippians chapter 3 verses 7 through 9 it should change us this much where he says that i thought the things of my life so he's talking about his his life that all the things that he used to do all of these previous encounters and he said i, I once thought these things were valuable but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. Um, when I read that, it makes me feel like everything starts to change our habits, our words, our actions, uh, the way we treat each other, our relationships, all of these things start to change because what we've started to find our identity in before, it means nothing. Our worldly success, our, our I don't know, relational interactions, our jobs, our, uh, our, our sports teams, I don't know, whatever you found your identity in before, it's nothing, it's garbage, it's nothing without Christ. If Christ isn't the center, then the rest of it really doesn't mean anything anymore. Uh, because in reality, our, our core, like everything about us has changed. When we are truly um, uh, interacting and engaging and knowing and living for Christ, everything about us has changed. It says this in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, the new things have, be, have come. And, and in, in the Bible, we see this truth play out all the time. We've seen this play out, this new creation idea. We saw it in Zacchaeus. We saw it at the woman in the well. We see it with the disciples. Uh, we see it with the interactions of, of a, a crazy demon-possessed man on a hill that nobody can contain that was out of his mind. We see it with a woman who had bleeding problems that just wanted to touch Jesus to be. We see it over and over and over and over again. Uh, but, but the place that I think we see it the most, and I want to talk about this because I think this is kind of something relatable maybe for us, is in Paul. Uh, before he was Paul, he was Saul. He wasn't always the guy who wrote most of the New Testament. He wasn't always the guy that went on these great epic missionary journeys. He wasn't always the guy who was an apostle for, for Christ. Before that, he was a zealous um, Pharisee that, that he used to take out, <laughs> I, I'll use his own words. This is how Paul would describe himself to others in Philippians chapter three, five through six. So right before we got to that verse seven through nine, this is how Paul described himself uh, of who he was before he met Christ. I was circumcised when I was eight days old. I am a pure-blooded citizen of Israel 
from the tribe of Benjamin, a real Hebrew if there ever was one. I was a member of the Pharisees who demanded strict obedience to the Jewish law. I was so zealous that I harshly persecuted the church and as for righteousness, I obeyed the law without fault. Paul was a Pharisee, a persecutor, a murderer. This is who Saul of Tarsus was until the day that he encountered a risen savior. See in Acts uh, uh, chapter nine, verses three through six, it gives this, um, it, it paints the story of, of Saul of Tarsus on his way to Damascus. He wanted to pursue the church to snuff them out. He got permission from the Sanhedrin to go out uh, outside of Jerusalem to actually pursue them in Damascus to get rid of all those who follow the way or Jesus. And so what he would, it says that he, while he was still breathing murderous threats, he gets on his horse and he heads out to Damascus. And then it says this <clears throat> in, in three through six of, of Acts chapter nine, as he was approaching Damascus on his mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. And the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one who you, are, who you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. From that moment on, Paul's life changes forever. That he doesn't look back, that his whole world was flipped on its head and that, that years later he would recall that former life that we just read before and he would call it garbage, that it was nothing, that even though he said he was perfect according to the law, that it meant nothing because it didn't have Jesus in it. His world started to make more sense the moment that he was knocked off his horse, that he couldn't see, that he was blinded until he was regained his sight, not just physically, but, but spiritually, that now he knew what he was to do. And that was to proclaim this good news about Jesus who death could not conquer, that he would die for our sins, that he would raise, just as the prophets foretold in the Old Testament, that the tomb didn't hold him, that he is alive. And how important that is, that that, that changes things, that it changes not just things, but everything. Uh, I mean, he would have to, 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 I don't know how, how hard this would be, but he started to switch things. Now, when legalism would come in, he would have to combat that and he would help the believers in Philippi to do those same, same things. And, and he would just help them to know that without Christ, things are just worthless. And he dedicates his life to that. You know, today we're, we are celebrating Easter and I don't know, I wanna remind you all something, that if you claim to be a Christian, that that means at some point in your life, you had an encounter with the risen savior too. That at some point he has knocked you off of your horse of life, he's flipped your script, he took your old life and said, no, it's time to make it anew. Paul also talks about, uh, in, in another one of his letters, he says that on our own, we were dead in our transgressions, that, that we were leading a life that was led to the wrath of God, but yet God in his grace saves us through Jesus. And it says, through grace, you have been saved. That each and every one of us, when we've encountered Christ, this risen savior, we are now saved because of grace. That through grace, we are, are saved. That Jesus saves us and it changes things. Now you've been knocked off your horse and you're sitting there. Maybe you're still asking, who are you? And today I want you to know that that, that's Jesus. And he might be looking at you saying, hey, you don't have to do this anymore. I have a better way. If it's drugs that you are addicted to, I have a better way. If it's alcohol, I have a better way. If it's just living a life with no purpose, I have a better way. If you are trying to be just good, but you realize that you just can't find a way to be good enough, God says, I have a better way and it's through my son and through grace, you don't have to be perfect. You just have to believe and start living a life, walking in the footsteps of my son, Jesus. I want to say that sometimes we try to make it rocket science. We try to really find like uh, pinpoint nitpick things and really try to, to read between lines. But really Jesus makes it simple. Love me and love the people I put around you. That, that when you embrace me and I see you and I say you are forgiven, 
you know, Jesus always reminds people to leave and don't sin anymore. Now, I, I know he knew that we couldn't do that on our own. That's why he came. But that is our mission, to live changed lives, to live lives of purpose, to go and wait for where God is calling us and who he's calling us to. And sometimes it's going to be uncomfortable places. Sometimes it's going to be, you know, uh, with, with abundance. And sometimes it might be a struggle. But the goal is not to be fulfilled earthly. The goal is to be fulfilled in heaven and eternity with our Father, that we get that gift only through Jesus. So today I want you to maybe relive that moment when you had your uh, Saul heading to Damascus moment, when you really experienced Jesus for the first time, when your life was changed. Now I don't want you to go back into your old ways when you start to feel the stress of this world, where you start looking to those empty wells again to be filled up, but instead look to the one who knocked you off that horse to put you on a better path and let him lead you to the life that he's called you to be, one of purpose. Jesus tells us that, that the thief is coming to, to kill, to steal, and to, to destroy, but Jesus came that we may have life and have it abundantly. Today, I want you to start living your most abundant life, and it comes with accepting Jesus as our risen Savior to live changed lives. I want to pray for you. Uh, if you haven't experienced that or accepted that, I want you to do that. Uh, I, want, I want you to get there. And if you need more help getting there and more studying of the Bible, I would love to find a time to, to help you navigate that. If it's just, you know, uh, you, you, you kind of are, are falling back into your old stuff. I would love to help you get back on the path that God had for you from the beginning. One that is full of life and love and abundance. And if you're struggling with your, I don't know, whatever is keeping you from God, let's talk about it. I want to pray for you for that. But those who haven't accepted Christ, this prayer is going to have you in it. When we accept Christ, we gain life because of the grace of Jesus who was willing to die, to be buried in a tomb and on the third day to be risen so that we too may rise up from this world and have a forever life with God in heaven. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear Father, Lord, you're an amazing and awesome God. Your abundance overflows. That when we were headed to, to destruction in our lives of death, you give us life through your son. Help us to believe, help us to be strong, help us to walk in your path and thank you for your grace. God, help us to navigate this world with your Holy Spirit, to do the things that you have called us to do, not because we feel like we have to achieve it to be saved, but to do it because we've been saved already. Thank you for that gift, God. For those who have it on their hearts to, to, to take you as their Lord and Savior, God, I pray that you help them and put your spirit in them to not put it off another day, but to accept you now in this moment as their Savior, God, as, as you are mine. God, I thank you for the love that you have for each and every one of us, that you'd be willing to leave heaven to come to this place to die for us. Help us to never forget that and to live lives changed and purposeful because of that gift, God. We pray all these things in your son's name. Amen. Hey, everybody, I just want to thank you uh, for joining us. Happy Easter again. I hope that you've had a blessed Sunday. I hope that you get to spend some time with whoever it is you spend time with, your family. If it's through Zoom or in person, you're being safe. God bless you. I hope that you have a blessed and awesome day and that each and every day is a resurrection Sunday for you, that you remember that you are loved, that you are cherished, that you are saved because of the gift of Jesus. Have an awesome day, everybody. We'll see you next time. Amen.